بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على خلفاء نبيك وأوصيائه وأهل بيته وأحبته علي أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سبط نبي الرحمة وسيد شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين عليهم السلام وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من خدامه وأنصاره وأعوانه إن شاء الله عباد الله أوصي نفسي وأوصيكم بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره قال الله تبارك وتعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما يعمر مساجد الله من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر وأقام الصلاة وآت الزكاة ولم يخش إلا الله فعسى أولئك أن يكونوا من المهتدين صدق الله العلي العظيم In the past, I spoke about an important subject, and that is the manners of entering a mosque, how we should enter the mosque, how we should behave inside the mosque, how we should maintain peace, tranquility, and love, and care, and respect inside the mosque. And I, once in a while, I repeat this to remind myself and remind my sisters and brothers about Adab al-Masajid. My friends, Islam has to be reflected and serviced and imitated and practiced by us, not just inside our brains, but also inside our homes streets, neighborhoods, marketplaces, mosques, communities. This is Islam. Islam has a say and advice in every sphere of life. So Islam has to be reflected in our daily life. Islam is not an abstract theory. Islam is a religion of a practice. Therefore, we must practice the real Islam, not our own traditions that we inherited from our ancestors. So what are Adab al-Masajid? Let me share a few points, remind ourselves. This is very important. We share these points and we learn them so we can maintain the respect in the masjid and we can please, we, we should please God. This is God's house. The masjid, the masjid belongs to God, does not belong to any person, to any family, to any individual, to any government, to any entity. The masjid belongs to God. So therefore, number one, first when we enter the mosque, if it is not, the khatib is not giving the sermon, then it is highly recommended that we perform two rak'ah, tahiyyatul masjid, the greetings of the mosque. If there is no sermon, before the sermon. After the sermon, when the sermon begins, it is makruh, makruh, undesirable, and recommended to do tahiyyatul masjid, makruh. Don't do it, because this is the time of sermon, and the two sermons are part of the Friday prayers. Friday prayers would not be established without these two sermons. So if a person misses the two sermons, then he might join in doing Jum'ah, but after Friday he should do Dhuhr. Friday would not be sufficient for him or her if they miss the two sermons. 
Therefore, once you enter the mosque, anytime, during Friday, Saturday, weekdays, day, night, try to perform two rak'ah, tahiyyatul masjid. Before you get busy speaking to your friends, checking your text messages, the first thing do, tahiyyatul masjid. The second thing, my friends, we have to maintain quiet and peace and tranquility in the mosque. The mosque is a safe haven for our souls. We are troubled outside. Once you leave this place, wherever you turn yourself, there is a problem. There is a disaster. There is an accident. There is bad news. So we come here to regain some spiritual power, spiritual strength, tranquility, peace. So we have to observe silence. And if some people are speaking loud, we have to ask them politely, whether they are men or honorable women. We have to ask them to observe the silence. Silence is very critical inside the mosque. The hadith says, even if you do Quranic recitation by yourself, do it quietly, not loudly. Even if you read dua, even if you pray doing salat, be considerate and thoughtful to the person who's sitting to your left and to your right. Keep the masjid nice, clean, without loud voices. وَقْصُدْ فِي مَشِّكَ وَغْضُضْ مِنْ صَوْتِكَ وَغْضُضْ مِنْ صَوْتِكَ Cast your voice down when you are inside the mosque. In another verse, Allah says, لَا تَرْفَعُوا أَصْوَاتَكُمْ فَوْقَ صَوْتِ النَّبِي وَلَا تَجْهَرُوا لَهُ بِالْقَوْلِ كَجَهْرِ بَعْضِكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ and tahbata a'malukum wa antum la tash'roon. In the beginning of Islam, people were Arabs. And Arabs, and I am one of them, are loud, mashallah, loud. He wants to call in his son, Ali! His son is next to him, huh? But this is a habit. He has to scream. So God said to them, when you come inside the mosque and the Prophet is there, la tarfa'u, do not raise your voice. Be polite. This is the Prophet of God. And don't call him by his first name. So we have to observe this inside the mosque. If we need to speak, either we go outside or we whisper. We whisper. And then we silence our phones. Sometimes we are in the second rak'ah and, and I hear the adhan coming from, you know, some iPhones or some, you know. So we have to observe silence inside the mosque. And then we have salatun nawafil, my friends. Beside Tahiyatul Masjid, it is recommended that we do Nawafil. Fajr Nafila is two rak'ah before Fajr. Dhuhr Nafila are four rak'ah, two by two before Dhuhr. The Asr, two by two before Asr. Maghrib are four after Maghrib, and Isha is either one rak'ah or two rak'ah from Julus. These are Nawafil. If you have time and energy, do them. There is no hurt in doing that, especially in the tradition of Ahlul Bayt. We have to respect the tradition of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Ahlul Bayt. Then the lines, my friends, we should not leave a gap between the lines. Neither we stick to each other as some people do. They stick to you and they push you. Don't do that. Be nice. We are not in a you know, wrestling arena. This is a masjid. Don't stick to each other. It's not nice to stick your feet or your arm, your shoulder to the one who's next nor to leave a gap, someone in the middle, something in the middle. Line up, don't leave any gaps between you. And between us and the sisters, this, this distance is enough. One feet is enough. Don't go 10 feet to the back. In some cultures, in some mosques, they go 20 feet. No, in the school of, I am speaking about the school of Ahlul Bayt. The Ja'fari Fiqh, Ja'fari jurisprudence that we received from Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, and Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, he received it from his forefathers, from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa My friends, when we come to the Friday prayers, we have to face the Qibla. We have to face the Qibla. Why? Because the, the Friday sermons, maybe in other lectures, you can face that direction or that. But the Friday prayers are considered two rak'ah. Each sermon is considered rak'ah. So you have to have wudu, we have to be silent, and we have to face the qibla. And we are not allowed to speak to people who are, who are you know, uh, close to us. 
And then, my friends, when you come and the, 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 the sermon has begun, it is not recommended to say salam. Neither they say salam to your friend nor the imam. When the sermon has begun, before it we may greet. But once the sermon has begun, we must take our place and maintain silence. Some people, they come, and while I am in Raku'a, they say, إن الله مع الصابرين An indication that please wait for me. And I don't wait for them. I would never wait for anyone. If you want to come and be with us, you have to come early. I can't keep 70, 80, 100 people waiting, waste their time because your janab is coming late. Therefore, I don't even listen to them. So don't waste your time. Don't read this verse for me. إن الله مع الصابرين I am not sabir. In the prayers, we have to do the prayers on time. إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْقُوتًا Do you know that in our fiqh? Today, Adhan was 12.52. You have only 30 minutes after the actual Adhan to begin the sermon. If you did not, if it was 31 minutes, 32 minutes, we cannot do Jum'ah. We have to do Dhuhr. The time of the Jum'ah, the first sermon has to begin no later than 30 minutes after the actual adhan. We can't. We have to be on time. People have things to do. We have to conclude and go. So, in Allah ma'as sabirin, yes, inside your home, with your family, but not with the imam of the masjid. Because we have to be really on time. And we have been for the last 23 years always on time. The salat has to begin on time. The lecture has to begin in time. Allah loves those who keep track of that time and respect time. And then, my friends, two more things. When we come to the Salat, whether Jumu'ah or other regular prayers, we have to fill the first rows. Then we go to, if the first one is filled completely from wall to wall, we go to the second. If the first one is not filled, we are not allowed to go to the second and the third. So please, 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 please listen to the teachings of the Sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Fill the first rows. Fill them. Fill them and the hadith says, Al-waqtu liman sabaq. First come, this is the meaning of the hadith. The meaning of the hadith of the Prophet, Al-waqtu liman. First come, first served. You come first, you take the place. Nobody can say, this is my place. It is your place. Okay? So first come, first serve, and last but not least, those who stand behind the Imam, immediately behind the Imam in the first row, they have to be uh, able to recite correctly in case the Imam one day something happens to him, the Salat Jama'ah is not going to stop. It's going to continue. One of those people who are behind him are going to move forward and lead and continue and resume the jama'ah. So those who stand be behind the imam, they have to know the qara'ah, the correct qara'ah, so they can one day, inshallah, lead the prayers. We pray for the full recovery of one of our best friends in the community who never missed the Friday prayers, never ever, winter, summer, you know, and that is Dr. Anwar Arasto. He's recovering. He had a very critical, difficult surgery last week. I got his permission to mention his name. He's recovering at home. He did very good things for our community and other communities. He comes from a Rasta family, a very reputable family in Hyderabad, India. So he's recovering at home. So I ask you, my friends, to pray for him now and recite Amin Yujib. And then I remind you of our of our youth retreat. This is the young generation, the young leaders retreat, and this is the 20th year, 20th anniversary, which is going to be June 28th, 29th, and 30th in Big Bear. So I encourage the young generation to come and learn about their Islamic identity and socialize with their brothers and sisters. We have a beautiful programs for them, and if you want to register, Brother Ali Muhammadi is the president of the youth. So please join me now in reciting this dua. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. 
أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء 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 اللهم من على مرضانا بالشفاء والعافية اللهم من على كل مريض بالشفاء والعافية اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجمع كلمة المسلمين على البر على البر والخير والتقوى والصلاح يا أرحم الراحمين وعجل في فرج إمامنا وسيدنا صاحب العصر والزمان We welcome Dr. Mehdi Taqi May Allah bless him He's a credit for our community And we are honored to have someone An intellectual leader Like Dr. Mehdi Taqi He was in his ziyara Inshallah he remembered us in his ziyara He's, he's a credit Him